Good morning from Zingaro. James did pretty well yesterday night. He let me sleep the whole night, so that was nice. Still tired though. I just tagged, we're going pretty much west now, 270 degrees, 280 maybe, but James went down south the whole night, so that's okay. I'll show you on a map in a second. And we are fishing, I put uh, two hand lines out as soon as the sun rose and um, we're not having any luck. I don't know if we're too slow or too fast or what the hell is going on. James just told me to slow the hell down, so we are double reefed on the main and the, and the jib. He was double reefed the whole night because I think it was pretty windy. So first thing I did when, when I started my shift was taking the reef out of the jib, but that was too fast. The, the seas are not very high, but I guess I could take the reef out. The waves were bigger two hours ago, so maybe we can go a little faster and we have more luck with the fishing. Our friends from yesterday night are gone, the birds, as soon as there was daylight, they left. I think they were sick of the whole traveling by boat thing. I mean, if you have wings, right? Oh yeah, the map. So we're going straight west right now, 270 degrees. James went, sailed straight south the whole night. So that's how it looks. Once again, also he's gonna tie the anchor up now. It looked a little loose. Woo. That was a good morning tower. It should hold it a lot better. It's still moving, but it's not rolling around. So did she tell you that I spent all night trimming the sails perfectly and then she came up on watch and like 30 seconds later she just shook all the reefs and we're like doing 20 knots in <laughs> in nine foot seas. Oh, come on. I went from sleeping peacefully to... <laughs> well, that's what you get for buying yourself a cat. So much for motoring our way through to Isla Cocos, huh? We motored for five hours cumulatively. Two the first day, and three the second day. And since about seven o'clock last night, We've been flying. I didn't even tack last night. We were just going south, 180 the whole night at probably seven or eight knots, and then now we're doing nine. We're flying over to the west, and then we're just gonna go straight down to south to Cocos. If we keep this up, we're gonna be there like tomorrow morning, which is cool. You know, I got an extra, let's see, 25 gallons of diesel on board, which is which is half of what I normally carry, more than half, because this is supposed to be the doldrums in here. And we're flying, we've only motored for five hours, so that's nothing. I, I, I'm carrying around all this weight for nothing, but better to be safe than sorry. Plus, we gotta go to Ecuador afterwards. We're doing everything we can do to slow the boat down. We're triple reefed on the jib and the main, and we're thinking about practicing with the parachute anchor because these waves are just, Every once in a while, one will break on top of the boat or one will hit underneath the boat and just slam it. This cat has really high freeboard clearance, but every once in a while, it gets hit also. Every cat does. But man, when, when it gets hit, it means the waves are getting pretty gnarly. Also, the weather stripping that James put on right before we left for Cocos is leaking on this. A wave came over and hit here, all the way here and washed right down into here. Not, not nearly as bad as it did before when we came from Colombia to Jamaica or before when we went from Mexico to the Caymans, but it's wet. And on a longer passage, having all this, I mean, it just goes from here into the kitchen until it get, goes in the other hall because the cat is healing a little. And on a longer passage, everything is gonna be wet and it's all salty. You don't want that, it's really, it's really uncomfortable like that. 
so it's important and the weather stripping is good but I think James just said it was just not tied down correctly. How's it going? That's better now. I was sitting on the knot, that was my, my problem. Oh yeah, that's way more compressed now. I think it'll I think it'll uh, it'll keep the water out now. You can't even pull that thing up. Right over there, it's a storm. We managed to tag away from the storm. We reefed um, the jib further, so the only thing left that we could do is drop the main. And yeah, we're, we're not pointing at all anyway, so maybe that's what we're gonna do next. Let's see what James is doing. We're making minus way good. What do you have to say about that? Yeah. Well, it's not in a storm. I'm Mr. Groucho right now because I'm hungry. It's what, noon? I haven't eaten anything today. Have you had breakfast? No. Well, let's make some fucking breakfast, man. It's your turn. Doing laundry in our brand new Ashuma bucket. Nice and neal. This comes in handy. Look how nasty this water is, babe. We haven't had a lot of spinnaker runs. It don't doesn't seem like we'll get one until we actually leave Ecuador. But I'm really liking the white. Actually, it looks pretty good. It looks cool. I didn't, I, I wasn't sure what to think about it, but you guys tell me what you think. Drop the peanut butter. Don't judge me, monkey. Did you eat it all? Mm, no. Almost though. What is your thoughts on the white paint? Do you like it now that it's in the water? I just hope we, we're not gonna, the first time we're gonna scrub it, we're gonna scrub it all off. We may do that, yeah. I think we should not scrub it until we get 100 miles from Galapagos if we go there. We're not going, James, still. I still wanna go. I know, but we can't afford it, I'm sorry. It's not gonna happen now. Wait, why don't Maybe we just after go twice? Ecuador. I spent lots of money on that shit. Cause we got to have that money right now. Yeah, but you just Somebody made money. Somebody spend it all on paint, peanut butter, the whole yard debacle. That Gotta was need debacle. a drone, a new fridge, a new dinghy. I think the Lepagos is in the cards right now. I want to go. I know. This looks so cool. This looks super cool. They're, they're all over. There's like 20 of them. Uh. Woo -hoo -hoo! That's a unique perspective on it. Dude, that was cool. I think I got some cool footage. We need to dr to have a line going, because man, those guys are so. So, this morning, which was a beautiful morning with rainbows, nice wind, small waves, we had a rude awakening. The furling line just snapped. We had we had the jet double reef almost the whole time since yesterday, right? Since yesterday noon? Yep. 
Yeah. Exactly, so it snapped now, it wore through. I was rubbing, I was chafing on the, on the furlough itself. And it's the third time that's happened to us, so we really need to find a better solution for that. And now uh, James is going to try to splice the furling line, which he has never done before. We downloaded a YouTube video on how to. We'll try because we need we need to reef the jib. It's huge. It's way too big for this boat, anyways. And with this kind of wind that's super variable, that comes up 20 knots out of nowhere, we need that. Let's go. This is the core, and this is the outer sheath. Just lay them over top of each other and kind of like this, and just splice it. So, why did it rub through? And where? I thought I fixed this, but I guess I didn't. What happened was it was, it was going to here, and it was on the top. If it's on the bottom, it doesn't rub through. But it's really, really tight, and it's on the top. It's it's going back and forth, and it just pop, popped it through. 